I mean, if you watch the game, obviously there's not a whole lot that you didn't see. You know, it was um, um, it, it was one of the better games that I've been associated with at this level. Uh, two, you know, terrific teams and um, great competitors playing their hearts out for you know a dream that each kid has when they go to college and. Um, it's, um, you know, as so I told the players, it doesn't matter whether this is the first time you've ever been to one or whether, it, like some of the players in our locker room, this is the first time ever for them, or it's for these three where they've experienced this before. Uh, there's something about when you reach this particular game and you win this particular game. Uh, it may even be more emotional than winning a national championship game sometimes because you know how hard it was to get here. And um, I'm so proud of them um, and their uh, sense of belief in themselves never wavered, no matter what happened, no matter who we lost, one after another after another. They never gave up on their dream, and now here we are. You have a Quincy and then Alexa. Uh, Lindsay Schnell, USA Today. Paige, I asked Coach the other day, you know, in the 720 days that you played between NCAA tournament games, how did he make sure that your spirit wasn't broken? And he gave a very uh, thoughtful answer on how you were a light and always, but he did mention that there was one game he saw you break down at halftime um, when you guys were playing at Tennessee, I think it was. So I wondered if you could kind of take us through that, just what this has been like mentally and emotionally for you, and then like when the clock hit zero, what that was again tonight. Yeah, um, last year was really, uh, the last couple years actually has been really like challenging on my mental, um, of me finding joy outside of the game, um, finding joy in the process finding joy in trials and tribulations and just I feel like I've had adversity thrown my way but at the same time like I'm super blessed to be in the position like I got surgery for free I got rehab for free I'm surrounded by the, my, by the best teammates by the best coaching staff um, and so many people that have helped me to get where I'm at today so just looking at the positives in life and all that I do have instead of focusing on what I don't um, and again, just trying to be the best teammate I could be. It's, it could be easy for me to sulk and be upset and just be sad about what, what life has thrown me um, these past couple of years. Or I could attack it with the mentality of being a leader, um, still being in the gym, smiling, motivating people, and being a leader and how hard I worked. Because I know people saw me um, in the gym every single day, whether it be Pilates, rehab, in the weight room with Hootie stuff like that. So that's motivating for other people to see as well. Um, and so just today was one of the most rewarding feelings I've ever felt in my life. Just being, seeing where I was a year ago today, um, just starting to do individual workouts, um, starting to feel the basketball again, get the ball in my hands again and, and play. And now I'm here and with my teammates and my coaching staff, I'm going to the final four. So it's been a very rewarding journey, and I'm super, super grateful for it all. Uh, the tough times made me who I am, um, and it's built my faith, and it's built just my appreciation for life and gratitude for anything that just gets, gets thrown my way. Alexa. Alexa Philpoot, ESPN. Um, Nika and Aaliyah, you've been part of celebrations like these before, but that one looked a little bit different than maybe the other two. Can you explain why and what it felt like just to go through that and, and celebrate with everyone? Yeah, I mean, <clears throat> obviously each celebration, you know, comes with a different story, a different set of challenges that year, um, different people, different relationships. Um, this has, as Paige said, been probably the most rewarding one. It felt different. Um, I would say, you know, this group is very special. We overcame so much and learned, for, learned from it, not just overcame it. And um, although a lot of people didn't believe we were, you know, ever going to do this, we did, and um, we don't get me wrong. We don't really care what other people think, but at the same time, it feels really, really good to be to prove those people wrong. So I feel like that's that's one 
that's one part of why it feels so different. Oh, can I go? Yes. So, okay. Um, uh, yeah, just to piggyback on what Anika said, it's just a great feeling. It's just a great feeling. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> Um, Michelle Smith, the next. Wait, can I answer okay, the you want to finish, please? <laughs> yeah. I, I, okay, cool. Yeah. All right. Um, anyways, so yeah, it's a it's a great feeling, and I think um, going off what Nika said, um, just we've been through so much this year, last year, and um, I think we really had to work hard for this win, and work hard for how far we've come, and. You know, obviously, you guys see us, what, what we do on the court, but it's really behind the scenes that we're really, like, grinding it out, and really, we, we had to go through a lot, and we went through a lot together. So to, to be here together and, and to look back on how far we've come, that's really the biggest rewarding part about all of this. Um, hi, Michelle Smith from The Next. This is also for Nika and Aaliyah. Paige knows she's coming back. You guys know you're not. How did that inform the way you thought about this game and the way you played in this game? And Nika, for you, you played with four fouls for quite a long time, and you didn't come out. And I know. <laughs> <laughs> How was that? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm sure Aliyah and I feel, felt much different. I'm sure she felt the same way as me. I, I would say Paige felt the same way too, even though she's coming back. Um, she felt that way because of us, because, you know, we're ride or dies here. And, you know, we, she knows that if she doesn't bring it, we're not going to get another chance, me and Aaliyah. So I, I'm sure Paige felt the same way. And it, it's different when you know every, every game might be your last. And um, you put you put a lot more into it. You go 100%. There's absolutely not one reason why you wouldn't. Um, so I'm so, I'm so proud of um, our team and the way we handled it. And we all just ride it, ride for each other. And to, to answer your question about the fouls, um, yeah. Um, I I told myself that I'm not gonna foul out this game. But I didn't say that I'm not going to get four fouls. <laughs> so um, coach in shoot around today was on me a lot about, you know, fouling. And I kind of took that personal. And I was like, there's no way I'm going to do that to my team and to myself again. And but yeah, happy with how it, how it turned out. Vicki Fulkerson from the New London Day in Connecticut. Nika, I, w I wanted to ask you about that, too. The, it, just the. Um, you were out there for like 13 minutes with the four fouls, but just the just the toughness, like the the toughness that you guys had to have today. Like Q came in, Ice came in, like just the the, the whole team's toughness to get through this game was kind of um, amazing. Can you speak to that, please? Yeah, of course. I mean, you know, coach is always on us about we have we already know we have a short bench, and that's never an excuse for us. Never has been, never will be. But what's one thing about it is that when we have a short bench, everybody needs to step up, and nobody needs to be great. You know, he said everybody just needs to be solid and do what they're best at. And I I think this is a game today where everybody literally did what they're best at. And I'm so so proud of people coming off the bench. Um, Q and Ice, I'm so proud of, you know, our freshmen, our underclassmen, the way they stepped up. Um, it's not easy, you know, this is your first time in this environment. Um, you've never been, you know, a part of it. You don't know what it feels like, but um, they play like they, they were in that environment before. And I'm, I'm so happy and proud of them and just super, super excited for our team. This will be our last question for the student athletes. Isabel Gonzalez, CBS Sports. Paige, in 2021, you won 11 major awards. You were the freshman that everybody was watching. Um, in that year, I don't believe your team made it past the Final Four. Now Juju is the one everybody's watching, and her team didn't make it to the Final Four. What advice would you give her in this situation to kind of use that as motivation and just keep being herself? Yeah, I think um, success is a process. Um, it's tough, especially as a freshman, to be leading your team like that. Um, and have no experience in this sort of environment on this stage. 
um, and lead your team, you feel a lot of pressure. Um, but for her to have the year she had um, as a freshman, fearless, confident, um, one of the best players in the country, um, she's got a lot to build on. And I know getting here and feeling this loss, um, we've been a part of it. It's very motivating. Um, and it lets you build experience on how to be better and how to learn from it. Um, and so just take, take the good, continue to build on that, and, and focus on what you need to work on and, and do that too. Paige, Leah, and Nika, thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Not done yet, baby. Final four. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> the floor is open to questions now from Coach Oriema. We'll start in the far back. Uh, Joe Zone, CBS Hartford. Gina, you've talked a lot about what it means to be coaching at this stage of your life. Was there anything more meaningful than watching your players celebrate on that floor tonight? No. No, there isn't. I mean, you're always, you're always, um, you're always trying to do as much as you can to help them achieve certain goals that they have. Um, you know, you're there with them every day. You see how hard they work. Um, they they buy into the things that we we preach every day about what's important and how to um, how to play this game and and what it means to play together. And you know, so hopefully, like a lot of the coaches as well, you know, we're trying to teach them more than just about winning. But when they do win and they do accomplish something that's really difficult to accomplish, um, you get excited for them and you feel their you feel their excitement, even even though you you probably don't have it in you to feel that way, because uh, I'm tired, you know. <laughs> it's it's excruciating going through this process. Um, watching the ups and downs of, you know, their emotions and how they feel. And, and when it all comes together, it's just a beautiful thing. And I was really, um, I was really taken back by the celebration. That was, that was pretty cool. You can tell it still means, still means a lot, you know, um, and we did it, you know, 3,000 miles from home. God forbid, no one ever thought we could ever win a game outside of Stores, Connecticut. So I'm glad we were able to win one out here. We're going to go ahead and go to the Zoom room. Uh, reporter on Zoom, go ahead. Hey, Gino, Dom Amore from The Current. What's up, Dom? <laughs> uh, Gino, uh, do you feel when you everything that you've gone through, everything that's happened, and then to get here, I mean, I think you yourself said that uh, it might take a miracle for you guys to do this. Uh, do you feel like this is your best coaching job at UConn, that in fact you did kind of conjure up a miracle here? Um, there, there, there are times when you know that you've, you've maxed out the the uh, the abilities of your players. Um, I'm a very realistic person, you know. I don't try to put unrealistic expectations on on players. Um, and when I watched them after what's happened, I, I did I did think it would take a miracle. Yes, you know, yesterday was Easter, so Easter's a celebration of miracles, right? And today's. April Fool's Day, so it's either a miracle or a cruel joke. But you know, we'll get there on we'll get there next week and find out if it's real. But I think our entire coaches staff probably worked harder at keeping it together, not so much in the you know what offense, what defense, and all that other stuff, and just keeping the whole thing together and not letting us kind of get frayed 
by all the things that have happened. You know, I talked to Lindsey before the game, and, you know, we were just talking about how, how difficult it is to coach in, in a circumstance like that. Um, so, yeah, I think our coaching staff had to deal with, with an enormous amount of things this year that we never had to deal with before. And um, I'm really, really proud of our staff. Um, and our president, she, she was here and she's not here anymore. She's headed for an airplane, but I hope she reads that, that, uh, yes, the greatest coaching job ever done in the history of women's basketball. <laughs> go Alexa and then Ryan. Uh, Alexa Philpu, ESPN. Gino, the game that Paige had tonight, what she even took on defensively towards the end, what she did offensively, other, every other aspect, what impressed you the most or was this just what you've seen for her when Paige. she's been healthy? Paige, Paige being Paige? Yeah. Um, well, I, Paige always wants to be um, superhuman, and you, you you can't you can't aspire to be that, but she she tries her damnness to be superhuman. Today she, she was playing against somebody that plays like they're superhuman, you know. Um, I think that was probably the toughest matchup that that any of those guards had um, throughout the entire season. Um, maybe since they've gotten to Connecticut, you know, I think Juju's probably, um, you know, as difficult a matchup as there is or has been for, for our players. Um, but for Paige, it's, you know, this is what I, this is what I live for. I live for these moments. And, um, I think she almost look at, looks at it as, um, they have to guard me too. They have, I am, I'm a tough matchup for them. And she always tries to make it our team against their team. But I do know that she's pretty proudful of, you know, she was pointing to her 10 rebounds. Um, and I pointed to Juju's 10 rebounds. <laughs> and, you know, she had an excuse why, you know, Juju got 10, you know, like, or why she, could, she didn't get 15. She said she was busy locking up somebody. She didn't get 15. So when you have players that think, like, there's nothing I can't do and there's nothing that escapes me, they're just, uh, they're just on another level. They play the game on another level. They think it on a different level. And they inspire everybody around them. Um, so, yeah, today was Paige doing Paige things. Ryan? Uh, Ryan Clark with the Oregonian. Uh, Gino? What is your impression of this moment for women's basketball? Obviously, two exciting matchups tonight, the star power, the attention that's being paid to these games, the audience is growing. Um, what, what is your vantage point on that? Uh, I didn't get to see the first game. Uh, you know, everybody was following it for sure. Uh, when I saw the halftime score was 45-45. I actually thought, man, I wish I was there. Like, I really want to see what's going on over there. Uh, those people must be in for a real treat right now. It's, you know, you don't want to, you don't want to over dramatize it, you know. But for the longest time, it was, um, if someone had these kinds of moments like these kids are having right now, they were either compared automatically to men's basketball and always came up wanting, or they were, wow, look at that. Look at, like, there's actually a female athlete that can do that, you know? So it never garnered the respect factor. It was always, uh, incredulous factor. I can't believe that, you know, she plays like a guy, you know. But now, now it's for real. Now they're being appreciated for their, for their incredible talents, the show that they put on, the excitement that they create on the court, the excitement that the fans feel. Um, 
And God bless them. They've, they've done it. It's almost like they've made everybody come to the come to the 20th century, so to speak, and finally catch on with what, what these people are capable of doing. And it's pretty, um, it's pretty remarkable. And next weekend should be just as much fun as this weekend. Um, but yeah, I, I hope, I hope, I hope Caitlin Clark had a personal agenda against LSU. And I know there's nothing personal between me and her, so I, I don't need to be seeing her drop 50 on us next weekend, you know? So I love her. I think she's the best player. Forget I ever said Paige is the best player in the country. I think she's the best player that I, of all time. I don't know who ever said that I said that Paige is the best player in the country. Annie. Hi, Annie Peterson from the Associated Press. Um, kind of against that backdrop that women's college basketball is having its moment. How concerning is it for you that there is like these missteps like the three point line here <laughs> in Portland? I, mean, I just want to kind of get your thoughts on that. And, and do you think it takes away from, you know, the, the big picture that, that women's basketball is having this moment? Uh, I, I think when when things maybe these things were are, are happening often at other places, other things, but the attention as generated now on the sport is such that things like this are blown up, and maybe this was happening ten years ago and nobody paid any attention to it. Maybe nobody was even smart enough to to notice or pay attention. Um, but it certainly doesn't take away from the performance of these kids and what they did. And, um, and sometimes things grow so fast and they explode so quickly that, uh, you know, we hurry up and we miss a step. And I always like to look at it as, I don't think anybody in the NCAA committee said, yeah, I know it's, I know it's a mistake, but nobody's going to notice this, so we'll let it go. It was an honest mistake, you know. Things happen, and let's move on. You know, the games were the games. The kids were fantastic, and you know, tomorrow, the next day, this will all be ancient history. We're at ten minutes. Do you want to stop here? Oh, you can keep going. You can keep going. Go to Michelle next. Michelle Smith, the next Gino. I did want to ask you about keeping um, Nika in the game with four fouls for that length of time during an important stretch of the game. Um, by necessity, or is, was that a trust thing with you and your senior? Uh, the word trust doesn't exist between me and Nika. Um, <laughs> KK had four fouls, and Nika had four fouls, and there did, uh, there did cross my mind, I know she's going to foul out. Now I'm going to have to put KK in an impossible situation as a freshman. So I just crossed my fingers and prayed that, because she did do that in shoot around today. She did something really stupid and fouled somebody, and I lost, my, I lost my mind. And she goes, I won't do that tonight. I said, yes, you will. I've, been, I've seen it for four years, over 9,700 9, games. Of course you're going to do it tonight. And she did it, but I think, I think for the first time there was a point where she was, she was scared, like I can't screw around anymore. You know, she learned her lesson from the Notre Dame game this year when she fouled out. So, did I trust that she would be able to do it? No, but I prayed. <laughs> uh, James Burcham with the Basketball Academy, Coach. First off, congrats on the win. Um, what? skills, uh, basketball skills, leadership skills um, that Paige has that puts her on possibly the Mount Rushmore women's UConn basketball? Uh, she's a selfless human being. So that automatically separates her from a whole bunch of other people. 
she takes care of her teammates better than anyone I've ever seen. Maybe, you know, there's been others, of course, but the, uh, the way she shares, shares all her good fortune, all the good things that come to her really don't mean anything to her unless she can share them with her teammates, whatever it is. And that part as a person, the part where the, the biggest moments, she's not afraid. And she comes through in those biggest moments. And I know, I know, because every kid has this, I know that there's a, there's a fear of what if I can't. And anybody who tells you there's not, they're lying. Okay? But the great ones, you know, they put that in the back of their mind and they just go and they do what they do. So we've had some great ones on that Mount Rushmore. I don't know that we could fit them all, you know? But, yeah. All she needs is to, you know, win a national championship. And hopefully, you know, we'll have an opportunity to do that next weekend. Do you know, for your freshmen to make the impact that they did, and in some ways looked so unfazed yet the stage they were on, would you have ever imagined they could do that? And, and even someone like you who hadn't played since the first round. There's, there's something about all of them that, are, that, that makes you want to believe in them. Um, and a lot of times, you know, freshmen are on the bench because maybe you don't need them that much. You really have a pretty good team and you want to bring them along slowly. I've had freshmen that you, you couldn't sit on the bench even one time, right? Every practice, every game they played for the whole four years. Some are just like that. Some need to come along slowly. Some you have no idea what they have until you throw them out there and then it's sink or swim. And I think that's what happened to these, to these freshmen. They were just thrown in a situation where they didn't expect to be in, but once they were in it, they thrived in it. And Q's, Q's unbelievable, you know? Q told, Q, Q told the coaches today, hey, I think my shot's back, I'm ready to go. You know? I never, never think you is ever not ready to play, or she's not a gamer. She's just a, she's a tough, tough competitor. And Ash, you know, Ash, Ash is Ash. When she's got it going, she's got it going. And when she's struggling, she's struggling. But as a group, you know, and Ice. If I didn't have to play ice, I probably wouldn't have played her today. Because there's things that ice does during 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 the week or you know leading up to games that makes you think she doesn't believe that she can be effective in in the next game that we're playing. She she makes you think I can't do this. But then when you put her out there and you go, listen, you have no choice. I don't care what you think. Then she goes out and plays really really well. So. Like I said, I pray a lot. Kevin. Uh, Kevin Pelton, ESPN.com. When USC tied the game in the fourth quarter, you take time out. Was that a matter of adjustments or just kind of trying to settle your team down, maybe get them a rest? And, and how did you see them respond? I think a little bit of both, you know? Um, they play so many minutes that any chance that I get that I can give them a breather, I want to do that. And then I wanted to make sure that we got the right shot by the right person and that we would come out of the timeout, take the lead, and settle things back down again. Last thing we wanted was not call timeout. They take the lead, and now we're in a little bit of a rush or a little bit of a panic situation. I don't know. So they needed a breather. We needed to address who's going to score. We needed to make an adjustment on how we were going to guard certain things. 
And, um, you know, we took off from there. Awesome. Austin White, uh, Portland Tribune. Gino, you know, obviously Portland's going to be hosting the Final Four in 2030, you know, Moda Center. I'm curious if you have just any overall thoughts of, you know, Portland hosting this event and the Moda Center, you know, three-point line aside. Oh, uh, yeah. Well, I won't notice it. I'll be watching on TV. I'm sure it'll be a great event. Um, <laughs> you know, I'll go be sitting there with my grandkids going, I, I was there. I played in that. I mean, I coached in that building. It's really cool. And um, I think that the fans that have come out have proven that they can host events here. You know, I think this part of the country is kind of basketball crazed, certain, you know, certain extent. Um, there's, there's not been enough opportunities up here to have those events. So I'm, I'm happy that, that there are. You know, um, and I think the city, you know, I think the city with only four teams here in the final four, you know, I think people will get a better sense with, with eight teams, it's kind of a, it's kind of a mess, to be honest with you. You know, you get 30 minutes on the court because the other seven teams have to, it's totally stupid, but with four teams here, I'm sure they'll put on a great show. No question. Uh, Coach, uh, Ed Guzman, LA Times. Uh, I was curious to hear from you. You know, you and Juju Watkins had a moment in the post-game handshake line. I was curious what was said or maybe what words of advice or encouragement you offered her. Go pro. <laughs> I told her, I said, it's a great opportunity for you at WNBA, overseas, three-on-three -three league. I'm sure there's great places for you to play. I'm sh I love Lindsay, but you got bigger, fry, you know, bigger fish to fry. Uh, she was very emotional. She was crying like all competitors. She put her heart and soul into this. And, um, you know, I just reminded her, you know, you had an amazing year and your team wouldn't be here without you.